Hello everyone and welcome to another video in Walrus Code. I wanted to share with you my uh, huge news. I mean, I got certified again in AWS and now with this certification, the Solutions Architect Associate. This is my third certification in AWS so far. I have now, I possess the, all the three certifications in the Associate level. The, others, the other ones are the Sysops Administrator and the Developer Associate. So how I got prepared for this certification, the Solutions Architect Associate, which is, which is by the way, one of the, one of the most popular certifications in the cloud ever and one of the, and the most popular in AWS itself. How did I obtain this certification? How long did I prepare it? What were my sources and how difficult was the exam? I will explain to you all of this to you in this video. So stay tuned. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to give your like to this video, share the link of this video with everyone you know that is concerned or worried about uh, getting certified in AWS or is just interested in the cloud and computing and programming. And subscribe if you're new to this channel. I try to upload content as far as as all as oft as often as possible. I mean, so well, let's begin with how lo long did it take to prepare for this exam? And honestly, it took me only one month to prepare, but hey, there's one thing to add here. This is not my first uh, associate level certification I do. So there is a lot of overlap between all the three associate uh, certifications. That is what I wanted to explain to you. So whenever you do one of the associate, the other two are going to be much easier. Uh, so I didn't learn from scratch. That is what I wanted to say. I could skip a lot of content in the course I took because a lot of content was already repeated. I have already prepared a lot of those sections I've learned in the previous certifications, uh, associate levels. So that's why it took me only one month. But, but if this is your first AWS certification or you just finished doing the cloud practitioner, now you want to continue being certified with this as Solutions Architect Associate, I would recommend you to take as long as you need to learn all the basics. Actually, for my first associate uh, level certificate, I it took me uh, five to six months to prepare because it may be a lot of content. But as I said, that is just for the first certification. As long as you do more certifications, there is always going to be overlap between the contents and you're going to require less time. How many points did I got in this one? Did I get? I got 840 points, more or less. And I studied for a whole month, every day, like half an hour, sometimes less, sometimes more. Sometimes I didn't even have the time, but yes, on average, half an hour per day for a month. What is my background? I already explained it. I have already two other certifications before this. I had the developer associate and the sysops administrator. And which sources did I use to prepare for this certification? I used the Udemy course from Stefan Marek. He's a very well-known, famous instructor in the AWS ecosystem. And he does a very good job with his courses. They go straight to the point. They don't go so deep, but maybe that's fine because for the associate level, it is not expected from you to know all the deep and details of the AWS services, just necessary. So that is one thing. If you want to go deeper, you all, I always encourage to you to do that in hands-on, you always should uh, do hands-on and have, of course, your own AWS account to experiment the stuff that is maybe not mentioned in the videos. So you have to complement the course with uh, your own experience. And if you have side projects, the, the better, I mean. You should have a side project. It doesn't matter if it is on a small one, but doing your own things, your own experiments in the console it's going to help you so much to grasp those knowledge, this uh, content much easier, faster and better. So yes, yeah, Stefan Marek course of the SAA and which practice exams did I do? I do, I did some of cloud guru, but I wouldn't, 
I mean, they are okay, they are fine, by, but I have found them to be easier than the actual exams, the exa uh, practice exams from Cloud Guru. There are two of them, I think. I did the first one and it was very easy compared to a real exam. And I also took some practice exams from Wiz Labs. Those are, I would totally not recommend those from Wiz Labs because they were very weirdly, uh, weirdly worded. They even had some grammar mistakes or spelling mistakes, and they didn't formulate well the questions. They were, they were, it felt not like an exam question. It felt just like any other kind of question that maybe were too picky. They were maybe even pickier than usual. So yeah, with lab practice exams are a no go. Cloud Guru, it's fine, but it's uh, kind of easier. So I would you'd recommend, I would like to recommend to use John Bonson's exams because I have already experience with those. For the Sysop administrator, I took those practice exams and for the DevOps, I th for, for the developer, I think too, yeah. But John Bonson's is the way to go for practice exams, 100% recommended. I took just two practice exams and some focus at uh, topic questions in the Cloud Guru platform. But yeah, if you have John Bonson's, go with John Bonson's and that is going to be enough, more than enough. Uh, yeah, and complement the practice exams with hand-on experience, as I already mentioned. And if the the Stefan Marek course also has a lot of hands-on, you should do all of them, really do all of them, because sometimes it's not only enough to just revise and read theory, but also put it into practice to apply the knowledge with your own hands, doing clicks in the console here and there, configuring, having mistakes. I have learned a lot from mistakes I have made, made in the past, doing experiments in the console and so on. So go ahead and get your hands dirty with AWS experience. So how to take notes? This is a, this is a very important point I wanted to stress because this is the way that changed my way to prepare myself for certification. I think this formula works so well and I learned so fast and actually can retain a lot of knowledge with not so much effort. I take notes on flashcards. Flashcards are the keyword here. You should use flashcards because they enable you to take little notes, but a lot of them. And then it's very, very easy to revise them every now and then on a daily basis maybe and even if uh, in your way when you're commuting to a job or to the university you can check the flashcards there because it's very handy you can have enough uh, flashcards app in your handy or a web app i use quizlet uh, personally like that application i think it has everything i need so whenever you are in the course take notes in the flashcards itself formulate already the, those questions you're learning in the course and then Whenever you have free time, revise those flashcards in randomly if you want or order it however you want. And that helped me a lot to retain because AWS is a lot about retaining a lot of concepts, a, a lot of services, what does what and so on. So it's a lot of content to grasp and flashcards is just a good way to increase your space, the, um, yeah, the amount of knowledge of the, or to, rehears the cage of your brain. So that was the point of taking notes. Finally, what would I recommend this, doing the exam in the test in the test center? I mean, or doing it online like a proctored exam. I have had both experience and personally, I prefer so much now doing it in the test center presentially. I want to go to this test center and do it there because I did it once online, a proctored exam for the developer associate, and the experience was not so great, I think. For my personal experience was like, I couldn't even move in front of the screen because you're gonna be observed by a webcam the whole moment, which is normal, but I couldn't even get closer to the screen to read questions because they thought I was cheating. I couldn't even grab a glass, um, a glass of water. Although that is allowed now, as I've heard, they changed that rule, but I, w I couldn't drink water uh, that at that time. That was at the end of the 2021. So, and you are not allowed to go to the bathroom doing when you're doing the test online. So 
I recommend you 100% now to go to a test center and take it from there. You're allowed to take pauses, to drink water, yeah, to basically to stand up, to stretch and then sit again, always under the supervision of uh, someone in the test center, but that's fine. You just call them and they're gonna come immediately. So I think I covered all the points I wanted to share with you about this, my experience doing the SAA, Solutions Architect Associate. And now that I, ha uh, now that I have all the three associates, I'm gonna prepare myself to achieve the Solutions Architect Professional. So wish me luck. I know uh, this certification, the professional level, covers a broader a variety of topics and much in a much deeper way, detail oriented way. So I expect to prepare at least for four or five months because yeah, that is what it takes. But yeah, I'm gonna come back eventually and tell you how was my experience and if I passed or not. So if you like this kind of content, I repeat again, don't forget to give a like, subscribe, share this link and the link of the video with others and write comments. What do you think about my recommendations? Or maybe you have your own experience, your own recommendations you want to share with us, courses maybe, or where to do practice exams. So I hope to upload another video very soon. So uh, see you in another time.